Today's video is literally the perfect follow-up to my previous video because the previous video was titled something along the lines of if you buy a house right now you're crazy and today's video is going to be covering some stories of buyer's remorse and I have covered this in the past but every time I hear a new one and the situation is a little bit different I want to take the opportunity to highlight it because right now you very well could be crazy if you buy a house and you may end up being the next person I talk about on the channel who has buyer's remorse. So one of the easiest ways to prevent that is to hear these stories in advance before you become the latest victim. So I'm not going to give names. I have the link for the full article down in the description below if any of you want to check it out and you can read even more of these stories for yourself. One of them was about this woman. She was renting and she got a 30-day notice from her landlord to move probably didn't have a lease and uh, just going month to month like a lot of tenants do first of all if you're worried about something like this happening to you just getting a 30 days notice to leave then the best thing you can do to prevent that is to have a lease guys like it works both ways yeah it gives you flexibility to leave anytime you want but also gives the landlord the flexibility to throw you out anytime he wants as well so goes both ways anyhow she got that 30-day notice and she had to move. Of course, her real estate agent was telling her that if you want to buy a place right now, you need to offer over asking price to be competitive. And right away, she wasn't really feeling good about that, but just went along with what they said like so many people do. And now that she actually has the mortgage, she feels like she was scammed because she said, you know, it was already so hard for me to work my way up in life to actually have enough credit and the down payment to even qualify for a mortgage. And now that I have the mortgage, I'm buried under even more debt. And she feels like it was just a trap to get her into more debt. And now it's even tougher to make ends meet. Her offer was $202,000 on a three bedroom home with a yard and it got accepted but her, the interest rates were going up because her initial pre-approval was around 3%, and then by the time she could actually buy, the rates were around 6% back in July of this year. But she was saying that she didn't feel good about the real estate agent's advice because of the bidding war situation. She didn't like being in a bidding war to get a house, and she was basically losing sleep over all of this, and thinking about backing out of the contract and just finding a place to rent, you know, keeping things simple. Her agent told her, which was horrible advice, guys, but this was what her real estate agent told her. She said, your home is an investment and that when rates go lower, she'll be able to refinance. And her additional advice to her was, you know, cut some corners out of your budget, pick up a part-time job in order to uh, help out with the affordability issue. What? What kind of real estate agent would tell anyone that, guys? I have never said anything like that to any of my clients, first of all. And telling people that your home is an investment and that you can refinance when the rates go down is a double lie, and here's why. First of all, it's not an investment, okay? You're gonna be living there, and the literal definition of an investment or an asset is something that puts money into your pocket. Robert Kiyosaki was the pioneer in this. He wrote about this in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it's very simple, guys. Assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take money out. So she's living in the house. It's her home that she's gonna be, her primary residence. It's a liability. If she were to turn it into a rental, then it would become an asset. So wrong advice number one from real estate agent. Second wrong advice, you'll be able to refinance when the rates come back down no she won't guys and here's why it's not that hard to understand either she had to pay over asking price for this house i don't know what the original listing price was but her offer was accepted for 202,000. and you can say well that's still really cheap by today's standards and sure it is and i don't know where she's located at in the country but that's not the point if she overpaid for the house and say the original asking price was like 170 grand and that was already at like peak of the market prices, so to speak. When things start correcting in her area, like it probably already is, and will continue to do over the next couple of years, she will not be able to refinance. And the simple reason why is because the only way you can refinance is if you have a substantial amount of equity in the property and you still have to qualify for that just like you're qualifying for the original loan. Well now, 
Her debt to income ratio is even higher because she's got this mortgage that she basically can't afford along with all of her other expenses on the home. And to top that off, if a few more years from now, interest rates go back down, she had that 6% rate. Let's say they go down to four and a half by 2025, whatever. Well, now uh, her home is only worth $170,000. It went down to 150 maybe, and then it kind of appreciated a little bit back up to 170, but she paid 202. She can't refinance. She's gonna be stuck with that 6% rate indefinitely until she can bring her equity to at least, usually around, they, they wanna see at least that you have uh, 30 to 40% equity in the property, guys, because they're gonna require you to have a minimum of 20% equity in the property at all times if you go to refinance. And if you don't have that, then you're not gonna be able to refinance. So here's how people can get upside down in their mortgages through terrible advice from their real estate agents. And I'm warning you about it now so this doesn't happen to you. And here is another way that this became problematic for this woman. When she was renting, she was only paying $800 a month in rent. Now that she bought this house, her, new, her mortgage payment is $1,500 a month with their taxes, insurance, interest payments, all of that, okay? And none of the kitchen appliances worked when she moved in, so she had to buy that stuff. She completely wiped out her savings buying this house and nearly maxed out all of her credit cards to get all these repairs done on the property that needed to be done. And she even downsized her car. She used to have an SUV. Now she just has a regular sedan and she's literally living paycheck to paycheck right now and she's getting extra money from doing instacart and renting her car out on the car sharing platforms and she can't even take her daughter out for her birthday this year so talk about buyer's remorse listen to what this woman is going through did you hear the key term in there she's living paycheck to paycheck now because of this house and her monthly home payment almost doubled, guys. She was paying 800, now it's 15. And it's safe to say, with the random repairs that come up, it's double, because double would be 1600. So she's right there. And she's floating this all by herself. And she has no room for error. If she loses her job, or there's some kind of medical emergency or family emergency, anything like that were to happen, this, this poor woman, because of her greedy real estate agent that pushed her into buying this property, she's probably going to end up losing that house and she will be one of the statistics that you end up seeing when you see all these foreclosure properties starting to hit the market from people who made bad decisions like this but remember it wasn't really her fault i mean sure she signed all the paperwork she made the decision ultimately but her real estate agent advised her to do this as if this was the best way to go and obviously it was not Now here's another fascinating story about buyer's remorse. In this same article, there was this couple in Washington State and they bought a 1900 square foot house. And prior to that, they were renting a 3000 square foot house. So they took about a 33% cut in the size of the property and the home price was 519,000 and their mortgage rate was 4.9%. These people, at least on the one hand, they had their mortgage payment be pretty much equal to what they were paying in rent. So that's good. They didn't get a, a double increase like this last woman we talked about. But get this, even though their monthly payment ended up being the same, they got hit with a surprise when they moved into the property. They did the inspection and the inspector told them that the roof did need some repairs um, somewhere in the neighborhood of between twelve dollars to $17,000 to fix the roof. Well, fast forward to move-in date and living in the house, the actual cost to repair the roof ended up being 65 grand, guys. Imagine that. Imagine being told that the roof would only cost 17,000 to fix, ends up costing 65 grand. Could you fork that over? So these guys got hit with a huge whammy right at the beginning. Now that's not necessarily their fault. That could happen to anyone and obviously was negligence on behalf of the inspector and maybe they can sue to recoup some of those losses because that is a huge discrepancy between what the inspector said and what the actual price ended up being. So hopefully there's some recourse for them for that. But really, 
The big mistake that these people made is the wife had an administrative assistant job and she quit that job in September of 2021 during the great resignation when everybody thought, oh, there's going to be a million better opportunities out there for me. I'm going to work from home, whatever her thought was. Well, fast forward to today, guys. She submitted over 200 job applications and now she works as a nanny and still submitting uh, applications to different jobs and she also now has to clean houses on the side and now they also decided to move some friends in with them to help ease the burden of the cost of the house because they had this huge unexpected roof repair so now they're in a situation where they're living with roommates they're working nanny jobs and house cleaning jobs just to make ends meet because chances are it didn't say but they probably didn't have the sixty five thousand dollars up front to pay for that roof so most likely they had to finance it somehow which adds to your monthly payment well your home payment used to be the, roughly the same as your rent but it's not anymore after you had this giant unexpected cost associated with the home so this is how people are getting in trouble, guys. And these are just two examples of buyer's remorse. We could make a three hour long video about a bunch of different stories that I, not only can I find on the internet, but probably some of you have some of these similar stories as well. And the reason I like to bring this up is just to let everybody know that you can make a big mistake right now. And this mistake can, can cost so much that it can literally change the outcome of the future of your your life you know so you got to be very careful right now because anyone looking to buy a house you have to be more careful than usual because of shady real estate agents looking to get a commission no matter what cost that ends up being to you and these are just a couple examples and speaking of greedy real estate agents i saw this video from cbc canada i'll have it linked down in the description below about all the mortgage fraud that's going on in canada right now now this isn't really a new thing but i wanted to bring it up because it shows you um, how people can be victimized just like people who uh, have the buyer's remorse as well as some scams to watch out for this is basically how it goes you have real estate agents who prey on mostly first-time home buyers or people that don't really know much about the home buying process and what they'll do they tell them well you can afford this million dollar house because we know that housing in Canada is super expensive, but we can get you qualified for it, but we need to put together some fake documents for you. So they, they end up offering a service where they'll put together um, fake tax returns. They'll put together fake IDs, fake tax returns, fake work references, fake uh, bank statements, fake everything to basically fool a bank into giving you a loan for this million dollar home, essentially. And these people even take 1% of the loan value as a commission to offer you this, uh, these fake credential services, essentially. And one of the buyers actually got screwed big time with this scam because they got lured into this. They decided to uh, do the offer and go forward with the house and trust their real estate agent's advice that they could actually afford it somehow. But once they found out that they were being scammed and that all the documents would need to be faked, they decided they didn't want to move forward anymore. But guess what? It ended up being too late because they were past their due diligence period in the contract. And now they are stuck in a situation where if they cancel the contract on this house, they have a clause where the buyer needs to pay the difference between the amount of money that was lost from the seller from not selling it now versus selling it in the future. So these guys could be on the hook for hundreds of thousands of dollars and they could lose their $40,000 deposit. And this seems to be something that's happening with the Indian community there, people that come here, come to Canada and live there from India. And because all the all the real estate agents that were doing this in this video were Indian and the buyers who were getting scammed were also Indian. So I don't know how widespread this is, but definitely it seems to be prevalent in that community. So if you are looking to buy a property, even in today's world with this current situation, you have to be extra diligent and be on the lookout for scams. Now I know many of you are probably smart enough to realize that you know you get your pre-approval with your lender of your choice, whoever it might be, and they tell you what you can afford, go from there, fine. 
But what you got to watch out for, especially first time home buyers that don't know much about this, is when your real estate agent is also a mortgage broker or they say they know a guy that can help you, just be careful. I'm not saying that all uh, real estate agents that act as mortgage brokers are crooks or you know all the referrals they give you are crooks. I have a mortgage guy I refer people to all the time and he's a legitimate guy. Been in business for 20 something years, okay? But if they start asking you to do shady things like uh, put together fake documents for a fee and stuff like that, that's a huge red flag, guys. You need to walk away from that because you're committing a felony on top of that. It's a felony in Canada. It's a felony here in the U.S. and I'm sure it probably is in many other areas as well. Not only could you be in trouble with the law, but all this could end up backfiring on you at the end too because you... You might not be able to actually get the loan in the end. And one of the last tricks they try to use on people is they say, well, we couldn't get you that loan that we promised, but we have this hard money loan that you can use to close right now. And it puts you in the position where you basically have to close, otherwise you'll lose your deposit. And they force people into getting these horrible hard money loans that have extremely high interest rates and just suck the life out of people's wallets. So, Watch out for this stuff, guys. You've been warned. Now, since I like covering remote work stories here on the channel, one of the latest ones is coming out of Equifax. And we talked about this type of situation in a previous video of something that people are doing called overemployment. It's where you hold a full-time job and it's a remote job. And because you don't, it doesn't require a full work day or, and you also need the extra money, people will take on another remote job in addition to the first one, whether it be another full-time job or a part-time job, whatever. Well, recently Equifax, they just fired 24 of their own employees for holding more than one job. And on top of that, they used their own database called the work number to identify employees and contractors it suspected were using their remote status to work double duty for other companies. And they basically cited that people who have full-time positions uh, with other companies is a direct conflict for working at Equifax and sometimes people that actually worked in the office that had these additional jobs would bring in their laptop from the other company into the Equifax office things like that and that was a big no-no and basically was enough to get people terminated just like we're seeing this big trend of a lot of companies asking remote workers to come back into the office a few days a week you really got to watch out for this situation now because when you see a big company like Equifax let people go over something like this you can almost guarantee that other big companies could end up following suit and they have a way to check for this guys because this work number database that Equifax has uh, they contain employment records and it has information like the weekly pay that you receive at other uh, employers and the work history different jobs that you've had in the past so they literally have a way to spy on you and figure out if you're working another job and how much you're making from that job so you can almost guarantee that other companies will start checking similar databases if not the same exact one to double check on their remote workers to see if they're double timing the system or not i mean personally i don't think there's anything wrong with this and if you're somebody who does end up getting canned from one of these companies maybe you want to hire a lawyer and check into your employment agreement and see if you're actually in breach of that contract because i'm sure there's going to be some lawsuits coming out of this so now that this is a thing that people are getting fired for holding two remote jobs uh, i think we're going to see the lawsuits come and ultimately we'll find out if there's any merit to the lawsuits and if they can be won or if the companies have the grounds to do this. So I personally don't know, but I think it's an interesting story to follow. If you guys always wanna get the latest uploads from me, make sure you hit the bell notification down below. And if you don't wanna wait for the next one, then check out another video on the screen right over here and I'll see you over there.